Idahoans are engaged in an important discussion concerning cleanup and research at the Department of Energy's Idaho site. A meaningful conversation requires an informed public that understands the risks, benefits, and issues at hand. Yet many are still confused about the differences between liquid radioactive waste, solid waste, and research materials such as used nuclear fuel. Cleanup progress at the site is significant thanks in part to Idaho's 1995 settlement agreement. This and other agreements prioritized cleanup and ensured protection of the Eastern Snake River Plain Aquifer, while assuring continuity for the lab's nuclear energy research mission. Radioactive liquid waste at DOE's Idaho site was the result of fuel processing work that recycled fissionable materials for the U.S. Navy and nearly 100 different reactors across the nation. Over 40 years of operation, more than $1 billion worth of reusable uranium was recovered. The process generated 3.5 million gallons of liquid radioactive waste. By comparison, DOE sites housing liquid waste in South Carolina and Washington store nearly 85 million gallons combined. Of the liquid radioactive waste in Idaho, more than 2.5 million gallons now have been converted to a granular solid called calcine, which presents very little risk to the aquifer. But the last 900,000 gallons required a new approach, which will convert it to a dry, stable form once a new treatment facility completes its startup testing and begins operation. Additional treatment may be required once the final destination for these wastes is determined. In the meantime, they will be stored in containers that can safely isolate them from the environment. Solid waste at DOE's Idaho site is comprised mostly of contaminated trash, tools, and clothes generated by our nation's nuclear weapons complex when the United States was in an arms race with the former Soviet Union. Some was buried in unlined trenches, and some was stored above ground on asphalt pads. Wastes from a nuclear weapons plant in Colorado made up the majority of the plutonium contaminated waste and contained large concentrations of hazardous chemicals. These chemicals posed the single biggest potential threat to the quality of the aquifer because they were more mobile than the radioactive contamination. All of these wastes were buried or stored in the Idaho desert according to the environmental standards of that time, which were based on principles of isolation, dilution, and minimizing human exposure. By the summer of 2012, nearly 90% of the waste stored above ground and more than 50% of buried waste targeted for retrieval had been exhumed, characterized, and shipped out of Idaho. Much of the hazardous chemical risk has been remediated and 220 buildings have been demolished, including four nuclear reactor facilities. This progress has drastically reduced the potential risks once posed to the aquifer. Used nuclear fuel, sometimes called spent fuel, is highly radioactive, but it is also stable and straightforward to store safely. These metallic plates and rods are physically robust and do not threaten the environment with potential spills, leaks, or leaching. The amount of nuclear fuel managed at DOE's Idaho site is about one-tenth of DOE's nationwide inventory and about 200 times less than the nation's commercial inventory. Most of it came to Idaho because the lab led the nation's uranium recovery efforts and research. Some came from government and university research including studies of the partially melted Three Mile Island core. And some came as part of the U.S. commitment to worldwide nuclear non-proliferation. Since its inception, the lab has helped improve nuclear fuel storage, processing, design, and performance. That mission involves examining used nuclear fuels. In January 2011, Idaho and DOE agreed on a process for allowing samples of used commercial fuel to be brought to INL for research. This process did not increase the amount of used fuel allowed into the state by the settlement agreement, 
it simply enabled INL to count research quantities of commercial fuel toward that total. Such quantities, less than half a metric ton per year, would be roughly enough nuclear fuel pellets to fill a bread box. Yet bringing these research quantities to INL supports the lab's long-standing mission. INL's advanced test reactor continues to help the U.S. Navy improve the performance of its nuclear-powered ships. And ongoing INL work is helping the commercial nuclear industry make similarly transformative advances. Enabling continuation of this nuclear research mission was a key component of the 1995 settlement agreement that sought to protect Idaho's compelling interests. Today, INL's distinctive nuclear energy research assets have convinced DOE that Idaho should continue to lead this work for the nation. That's why the Energy Department has invested nearly $1 billion since 2005 in INL facilities. These capabilities will be world-leading resources for studying valuable materials such as used nuclear fuel, which helps enhance the nation's energy options.